Right, we'll bring you some more reaction to the energy action plan announced by the president last night. Is it enough to end rolling blackouts? Government certainly does seem to have heard the calls from businesses, civil society groups, many other groups to open up the grid and harness the power of the private sector to create a new generation capacity or, as the president said, add more watts to the grid. Right now, because ESCOM's fleet is not working as required, there's a gap of between 4,000 and 600 megawatts. Since many power stations are old, they have to be decommissioned in coming years. ESCOM says that gap will rise, if you can believe it, to 50,000 megawatts over the next 13 years. Let's quickly run through the objectives of the plan. Firstly, to improve the performance of existing power station uh, stations. Now, that includes the cutting of red tape that has made it difficult for ESCOM to buy parts and tools for repair and maintenance. ESCOM has already announced it is on a recruitment drive to fill a skills shortage. Objective two is to add as much new generation capacity to the grid as possible as quickly as possible. So to add more watts, there are plans to call for battery storage projects in September and gas power after that. Let's now focus on some of the actions relating to renewable energy. A government has been using bid windows to approve new renewable energy projects from the private sector. The watts that will be procured during the next window, which is window six, have now been doubled from 2,600 to 5,200. Further bid windows will be expedited. The government is working to ensure that projects from the previous bid window five can start construction as soon as possible. Now, this includes what the president called taking a pragmatic approach to local content requirements, which insists that goods of a certain value for projects have to be sourced locally in South Africa. There are plans for ESCOM to buy more energy from businesses already producing power. There are also plans to ensure that at some stage you and I can sell energy to ESCOM. So final graph, let's look at how that will be possible. The president spoke about incentivizing households and businesses to install solar rooftop panels. Now ESCOM will develop a tariff, a feed-in tariff to allow homeowners and businesses to sell their surplus energy to ESCOM. It is potentially exciting for households going green, uh, putting on those panels already but that is all the detail we've got right now. All right, to discuss, so we're joined by energy analyst Roger Lilly, and we're also joined by the CEO of the South African Wind Energy Association, that's Nivishen Govinda. Thank you both. Um, Mr. Lilly, let me start with you. Is this a plan doing what many had called for, um, unleashing the, the full potential of the private sector to feed into the grid and close our electricity gap? Good evening, Francis. Thank you for inviting me to your show. Yes, yes, indeed. The, uh, the, the electricity supply industry has been calling for government to uh, use more private sector expertise and more private sector generation for many years. Um, this, uh, this program that, uh, that the president announced last night um, really should have been announced some years ago when he was working on the war room, the Eskom war room, which was formed in May of 2015. Uh, he was the chairperson of that. And really at that point already, uh, we knew how disastrous load shedding was to the economy. And uh, really this is, um, this is not too late, of course, but uh, it's, it's, it's come at a time when we really do need it. Mm. And yes, this is the only way forward. Uh, the government cannot provide us with the electricity needed on its own. And the private sector really is the only way forward now. And Mr. Governor, what does this mean for your members that are all involved in the, the wind, wind energy supply chain? Thanks for the question, Francis. I think it's, it's really good for us. So we've seen really exciting items come out of this plan. Uh, the increased allocation of bid window 6 you've spoken about, the commitment to uh, bid window 5 preferred bidders to get those wind and solar PV projects across the line is uh, exceptionally uh, useful at this point. The removal of the licensing cap for embedded generation projects is really the next step to liberalizing the energy market, uh, which will only make sense if this is also applied to larger projects with the ability to wheel power through, through the network. And finally, streamlining the processes within the various frameworks 
uh, of, of different permits and registrations and, and requirements of these projects. So all in all, I think we, we're happy with the leadership that the president has shown. Uh, and it's really, it's really telling us that government is affording this energy crisis the urgency that it requires. Staying with you, does the call for new battery storage, that will come in September, create new opportunities? Uh, it's always said that wind works when the wind is blowing. Solar energy is, is fine when the sun is shining, but you need the, the storage capacity. Definitely. An energy mix is required. I think looking at the research, any research that you're looking at, I don't think we're going to get to a full wind and solar PV grid. So battery storage is, is very much going to come in to stabilize that grid and manage uh, manage the system uh, and some thermal technologies also like gas will come in to, to manage the that equipment. Uh, coming back to you, Roger Lilly, one of, one of the big moves I uh, just mentioned is scrapping that need for licensing requirements. Uh, so, so now there is no cap. Um, last year it was capped at 100 megawatts. Um, now no licensing requirements. Now the president said there are already, uh, that has unlocked 80 projects with a combined uh, c capacity of over 6,000 megawatts. Uh, right there, that sounds like the, the solution to our current problem, a gap of up to 6,000 megawatts. But with these new moves, I mean, how long will it take for all those projects to get up and running? Well, the, the president also said that uh, these will be expedited. So we're hoping that with the cutting of the red tape um, and with uh, the, the ease of doing business uh, that should result from that, that we should get these uh, quite quickly. We're not going to get 6,000 megawatts overnight. It's going to take time. Equipment has to be ordered, imported. Uh, it has to be uh, set up in place. It has to be connected to the grid. There's quite a lot to do. Nonetheless, this is great news because it, without, with, without a cap, it means that big and small uh, industries, shopping centers and mines and large factories and so on can now start providing electricity uh, in assistance to Eskom. So in, what was happening in the past is that these large entities which had po uh, solar panels were helping Eskom simply by reducing the load on Eskom. Now they're helping Eskom not simply by reducing the load but also by providing surplus power to Eskom and ultimately to you and I and every other electricity mm. user. So it really is good news. Uh, Nivashen, if you had to uh, put a timeline to how you see um, rolling blackouts can be uh, stopped because of the new moves. I mean, you're talking about the bid windows and there there will be changes about the local um, requirements, etc. How does that speed things up? Uh, when do you see the, the gap being closed? Thanks, Francis. Look, South Africa's always been good at planning. We've always had the best plans. Uh, the effectiveness is to be seen in the implementation. So we're really waiting for the line departments to come out with the details of how this is going to be rolled out. Uh, but Windows 6 is meant to be closed in two weeks. So how are you going to increase the capacity? Are we really just going to take uh, more projects from the bidders that are being produced? Those announcements still need to be made. Uh, so in terms of timelines, I think those will come with the details. So once the, the departments come out with detailed plans of how it impacts their departments and their processes, we will then see the, the timelines unfold. I think from a technology perspective, what I can say is if the red tape is cut uh, and the processes are streamlined, the construction time for wind projects are two years. So we could have all of the wind capacity up and running in two years, uh, given that the processes are in the, the local content requirements, I mean, the president said we'll take a pragmatic approach on that. Uh, Nivashen, just, just tell us, uh, what are the requirements now in terms of how much um, uh, supply has to come from uh, South African suppliers and how is that affecting projects? I mean, it's a great idea, but it sounds like it's, it's just been holding up the construction of new projects. See, Francis, the localization requirements are twofold. One is a threshold uh, that the RFP gives bidders to say that your project must be 40% uh, localized. So in terms of the skills, in terms of the people, in terms of the products and services, they must be 40%. We've always, as a sector, achieved that and exceeded that target. We've achieved up to 47% of localization. A new requirement added into the RFP, I think, of Bid Window 4 was um, designated components. 
So there are particular components that the Department of Trade and Industry have designated to be used. And this includes steel and other uh, materials that are being produced in South Africa. The problem that we are facing as a sector is that we don't have uh, the capacity that is required for all of this new additional work. So concessions are being made by the department. Exemptions are being provided on particular components where there is not sufficient capacity. But I think as an industry, we are still supporting the idea of localization and the idea of developing a local supply chain, but within reason. So it has to be responsible. It has to be sustainable. We have to start creating businesses in the supply chain that will, will stand the test of time. All right, so that's a pragmatic approach, but uh, still details required there. Uh, Rogers, something else that, that we don't have details on is the feed-in tariff that will allow people like you and me, um, if we have solar rooftop panels, to actually uh, charge ESCOM for our excess power. Uh, what do you think about that proposal, and, and how does that fit in with ESCOM's previous plans to actually charge people for having uh, those solar panels? Up to a thousand rand was the proposal. Mm. Uh, Francis, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure whether ESCOM really had that plan or if that was just uh, hearsay. Nonetheless, um, if we have a look at what happens elsewhere in the world, we'll see that feed-in tariffs are lower than the tariff that you charged for the use of the electricity. So you, you, all you're doing really is getting some credits back. So if, for instance, your electricity is two rand per kilowatt hour, you might get one rand fifty back or something maybe less uh, than that. But whatever you generate in surplus to your own usage, um, you, you will get a discount, as it were. You will get some kind of credit going forward. So you have the benefit twofold here because, again, as you're using electricity from your own generation, you're not using electricity from Eskom, so therefore you're not paying for that. And then any surplus that you sell to Eskom, uh, you then get a credit for. So effectively, uh, at least on paper, you could end up with a, a break-even situation where for months on, on end, you might not be paying Eskom anything for electricity. Mm. Which will be music to, to the ears of some South Africans. <laughs> uh, finally, ending with you, Roger, the debt issue, uh, the huge debt issue that we've talked about for years. And, and the point is that Eskom can't really function well because it's spending so much of its revenue paying back uh, old debt. But that has yes. been, that can, as it were, has been kicked down the road again, hasn't it? Well, it, it's very interesting. What the president said last night was that Treasury was going to come up with some kind of a plan. Now, in the past, we've been told that Treasury simply can't pay that off. So we're not sure what exactly is, is uh, planned there. But it, it, it looks like um, Eskom is going to be relieved, at least in some way, from having this great, great big debt burden. Because, Francis, exactly as you say, a, a large portion of the money they receive from the sale of electricity goes simply to pay off that debt, uh, leaving them very little to actually run the business and, and, and do maintenance and upgrades and what have you. So obviously, if that can be relieved, uh, it's going to make a massive difference to, to the operation of Eskom. All right, thank you very much. Uh, yes, again, broadly welcoming what the president announced, although some details outstanding. That was energy analyst Roger Lilly and the SA Wind Energy Association CEO Nivashen Pillay.